I know it's an indie game running on the Steam Deck, but it's still pretty impressive to see this running at 1440p, 165 hertz with this portable monitor connected to the deck. What's going on everybody, it's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at Minus Forum's brand new portable monitor known as the MSSA-156. And basically what we've got here is a 144Hz 2K 15.6 inch fully portable monitor that's going to come in really handy for let's say the Steam Deck, the ROG Ally, laptop, mini PC. You can even connect this to your Android device as long as it supports some type of USB Type-C video out. And in this video, we're going to be testing it out with a bunch of different devices. And one of the main reasons somebody might want to pick something like this up is definitely for travel. That way you've got a much larger screen with you if you're working with something like a handheld with a 7-inch display or even an Android phone like a Galaxy S device. Uh, anything from the Galaxy S8 on up to the S24 does support Samsung DeX, and this works amazingly with it. So it does look like they send a screen protector along with this. And it's also got a folio case slash stand. So you're not going to scratch this up when you put it in your bag. And there's several different positions we can set this up in. It magnetically attaches to the back of the portable monitor. And it's definitely looking a lot thinner than I thought it would be. Taking a look at everything else that comes along with this monitor, we get a 30 watt power supply, full size HDMI to mini HDMI adapter, and a couple USB type C cables to get you up and going. I really love the fact that they went with a 144 Hz display here that supports free sync. And yeah, as you can see, this thing is really thin. It's got its own built in speakers, and we've got a bunch of I.O. on this unit here, like mini HDMI. That's why they send along that full size to mini HDMI cable, two USB Type C ports, and these are full function USB Type C, so both of these will support video in. And we've also got a micro USB port, and this is going to come in really handy for using as an OTG input. So if you used an adapter here and plugged in, let's say, a mouse and keyboard combo, you could use that device with whatever device you have plugged in over USB Type-C to the monitor itself. And over on the right hand side, we've got a 3.5 millimeter audio jack, our power button, and our OSD rocker. So we've got plus, minus, it's actually a three-way button, you can press in on it. That way you can easily adjust the brightness and volume, but remember we've got a touch screen here and the OSD is fully touch compatible. And even with the folio case on it, this thing is still super thin. Now the first thing I wanted to take a look at was just kind of a easy use case scenario. Somebody needs an extra monitor for their laptop when they're on the go. And this laptop does support USB Type-C video out, so we just need one cable here. It's going to power the monitor and send that video signal on over. I've got it set up to mirror my screen, but you can set this up as an extended display. You could also set this up vertically if you wanted to. And we've got full touch functionality because I am connected over USB Type-C. And just keep in mind, if you're going HDMI out of a laptop, you're not going to get that touch functionality unless you use an extra data cable. So you will need either full-size USB from the laptop plugged in or USB Type-C. Now, obviously, that's one way somebody's going to be using a portable monitor like this. But I think my favorite use case scenario here is setting up kind of a dock mode situation while you're on the go with your handheld. And we just need a single cable over to the Steam Deck or even the ROG Ally. So I've got the Steam Deck OLED here. We're going to go ahead and plug this in. And keep in mind, it does need to send power out of the Steam Deck over to the monitor. So it will be using more battery this way. So I would suggest using either an external battery or wall power to power the monitor. But I just wanted to show you that, yeah, it does work directly with that single cable. You can get this up and running if you want to use it like this. This monitor does have dual stereo speakers built in, but they're not terribly loud. I mean, you can hear them, but the Steam Deck does get much louder. Heading into settings, over to display, I'll show you what resolutions this supports on the Steam Deck, and we can actually go way up with it. Maximum resolution is 2560 by 1440, so we've got that 2K or 1440p display. And we can go all the way down to 720 by 576 at 60 hertz, or all the way up to 2560 by 1400 at 165 hertz. Seeing that 165 is a little odd here, given that this is advertised as a 144 Hz display. But in the past, with external monitors on the Steam Deck, I've seen some funky resolutions and some funky frame rates. So I'm not exactly sure if that's what's happening here. But yeah, I mean, it definitely looks like we can go up to 165 with the Steam Deck on this monitor. We've got that Touch OSD, and we'll dive a little deeper into that. I just wanted to turn the volume up. We can also control the brightness, change our saturation, and I've got FreeSync enabled right now. And when it comes to touch functionality, and when it comes to touch functionality using external monitors with the Steam Deck, it's a bit hit or miss, but this does work flawlessly with Windows. When we move over to the ROG Ally, I'll show you that. 
But there's no doubt that this is a really good looking IPS display. And I wanted to show you a little bit of gameplay here. Now when connecting to an external display using an external controller would definitely be the way to go. But since I'm so close here with the Steam Deck, I figured I could just use those built-in controls. Here's Hades at 165 Hertz. Of course, this isn't a super hard game to run, so it'll run really close to that. Taking it down to around 120 would probably be the way to go. Even for older stuff like Half-Life 2, the Steam Deck can run that game at 120 Hertz on this monitor. It looks really good here. Great saturation. It's nothing super fancy like an AMOLED. It's only an IPS display, but it's a very clean IPS. And I didn't get a low charge rate warning when I plugged this into the Steam Deck. From my testing so far with the stock adapter, it looks like it'll do about 20 watts out. So we can kind of charge the battery up on that Steam Deck at the same time. It's not 45 or 65, but it will hold a charge. Next up, we've got the ROG Ally. And I mentioned that, you know, touch screens don't work out really well with SteamOS on the Steam Deck. But with the Windows device, we've got really good touch support. And we've also got kind of a rotation here directly from the OSD, so we really don't even need to go into the settings to rotate the screen. Now you always could if you wanted to. I'm upside down, I gotta find it, there we go. It'll bring us right back to that normal landscape mode. What I've done with the ROG Ally here is set this up as my main display, so we're now at 1440p, up to 144 hertz. I wanted to show off a little bit of YouTube 4K video playback. And of course the ROG Ally can handle 4K 60 playback quite well. Now even though we're not working with a 4K display, it's only 1440p, it still looks absolutely amazing. It's an IPS panel with 100% sRGB and I think the colors really pop on this unit. But the main reason I would connect this to a gaming handheld in the first place is the game. And again, using an external controller is probably what you want to do. But since I'm right here, we'll just use those built-in controls just like we did with the Steam Deck. Right now, I am using the built-in speakers on the monitor for this game. Dual stereo speakers, I've got it at 100%. It's a bit tinny, and I've never really heard great speakers on a portable monitor. Most of the time, you will be using, let's say, the speakers on whatever device you have this plugged into, but they're here just in case you need them. And this is super smooth. FreeSync is enabled right now. I just went down to 120 hertz from the Windows settings on the ROG Ally. And this game can get really close to it with those settings way down with this uh, Ryzen Z1 Extreme. But I think it looks really great on this external display. And the final thing I wanted to show off here was Android support, more specifically Samsung DeX. I've got the Galaxy S24 and you will need power connected to the monitor. The S24 just doesn't put out enough power over USB to power that monitor. But uh, with this, we can use the built-in trackpad right here on the phone screen to navigate the operating system in the background. But again, it's a full touch screen, so we don't even need that. And with power plugged into the monitor, we're also charging our device at the same time. Got a full desktop interface here with Samsung DeX. And this is one of my main use case scenarios for these portable monitors here. This actually works out really well for DeX, or even if I wanted to mirror the screen on my device, I could do that. I've just got it set up to automatically go over here because this is how I like to use these larger screens connected to my Android devices. And in case anybody was wondering, yes, you can use an external battery bank to power the monitor. Right now I've got the S24 plugged in. As you can see, screen's not doing anything, but as soon as I plug in my little power bank here, it's gonna turn that monitor on, start charging my device, and this will work with any other device. So if you did wanna do this with the Steam Deck or the ROG Ally, not a problem. This way you've got a fully portable setup and this battery served me very well. I actually picked it up specifically for the Steam Deck and it works great for that or any other device I've ever plugged it into. I'll leave a link for it in the description. And before I wrap this video up, I wanted to give you a look at the settings we can use here in the OSD. Obviously we can rotate the screen, I've already showed you that. We've got full control over the brightness and the contrast directly from the main menu. We can enable and disable free sync. There's a few pre-made profiles here and, um, oh, it's not the menu button. You gotta press up to go to the next section. We can easily change the aspect ratio, three by two, 16 by nine, 16 by 10, or you can have it in auto mode. And from here, we can fully adjust the color. There's a couple different presets here. sRGB actually looks really good, but I've been sticking with the game mode here. Gives a cooler look. I personally like this one, but you can fully adjust that to your liking. So we've got a lot of settings here that we can mess around with. You can tweak and tune it to your liking. There's also a reading mode, which will turn it basically black and white. 
and we can also enable or disable FreeSync at any time. I've got it enabled right now, but you can easily disable it at any time. We'll do a quick reboot for us, but now we've got FreeSync or variable refresh rate completely off with the monitor. First impressions here, love the design, coming in super thin, lots of connectivity, mini HDMI, two USB Type-C ports, we've also got that micro USB for OTG connections, and this has worked out really well for the Steam Deck, ROG Ally, my laptop, mini PCs, and even mobile devices like Android phones and tablets that support USB Type-C video out. So if you've been in the market for a portable monitor, this is one that I can definitely recommend. I'll leave some links to their official website in the description. And if you've got any questions, let me know down below. But that's going to wrap it up for this one. And like always, thanks for watching.